eighth house is revenge. He's getting some kind of revenge. This is the solar return chart for the UK. If we were to use the one that's online for January 1st, 1801. Okay. So I marked the houses and the months. And of course, the first house starts January 1st. Interesting how the ascendant is in Scorpio. Never, never an easy year when you have your rising sign for your solar return chart. And again, it's solar only. Don't You're not going to have your birth um, planets on the outside. But so from here, I mean, it's kind of easy, January 1st. Uh, so each house starts on the 1st. And you could see between February 1st and March 1st how much was happening for um, for the UK there. There was, whenever there's like a bunch of planets in a house, it's like, ooh, stuff's going to go down. And here's something really interesting too. In fact... Let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see. Okay. So the whole stuff with, if I remember correctly, uh, Charles and Catherine and all of that stuff, you know, it was between February and March. So we were looking at house two and house three for the UK. Okay. And... What we're going to keep our eye on when we're looking at predictions for the royal family, particularly this year, is Neptune because it's so prominent in the charts this year. Why? Neptune is scandal, scam, it's fake, it's photographs, um, it's people making up things about the royal family, it's lies, deception, and it is hitting the family hard. For the UK chart, I look at the fifth house as the family, okay? And you could also this year look at the royal family as the MC because this is Regulus. This is the king up here. And this isn't good. This, this is not good because you have an opposition to Saturn, which means the king stops, okay? So we will probably, and how would you read that? Well, you're going to have to read that Saturn in the fourth house would mean that something is going to happen in that fourth house time period, which would be April 1st to May 1st. We're already in April 8th. This is going to be, I mean, any day now we're going to be hearing potentially someone saying that something stops. It comes to a complete halt and it has to do with the royal family. Um, the good news, though, is we, we can always find good news. And we're going to read this as if we're reading a human's birth chart, but it's really, you know, the UK's soul return chart. We've got part of fortune in there. All right. And that is good. We've got the government is the sun and you have some nice aspects to the part of fortune. So this year, the government seems like it's going to keep on running, um, you know, all systems go, everything's good. It's just that darn family and all of their drama. And at least that's what this would say. Now, the fifth house this year starts in Aries. Aries is anger. So when you look at your own solar return chart, you're going to be looking at the Aries house for, it's going to indicate what makes someone mad, makes you mad, what makes other people mad. Aries is anger. Okay. And so that's going to be indicated, not that we haven't already seen that with this uprising, it seemed online, demanding Princess Catherine's photos be seen. And whoops. Okay. Uh, hey, Heather, nice to see you. Thanks, Joyce. Uh, and told you, you say Ju July with Uranus is not a good sign. Will there be a shock? Ah, good point. And we're going to look at that. The good thing about that Uranus is that it's not in that poor of an aspect. Now there's going to be shocks, no question. And when you want to look at your own 
shocks. You're going to uh, look also at Aquarius because that's going to be the house that has an upset. That's going to be the month that has the upset if it's in poor aspect. Sometimes if there are trines and sextiles and semi-sextiles, that means things go fast. If you want to get out of something, boom, you're done. Uh, if you want to start a new project, wow, it's really fast. So that's the good side of Uranus. And I see that uh, to some degree with the royal family. But May 1st to June 1st, this is the royal family month. Okay. There's going to be a bunch of months, but this one is what is indicated by the UK chart where stuff's going to happen. So what I am predicting is that there's going to be Neptune is a little bit later on in the month. You can see it's a little bit, if you look at, this is kind of the first weeks of April, then the last weeks of April, and look how it squares the family. So there's more scandal coming. Then the fifth house starting between May 1st and June 1st is again ruled by Mars. So more scandal because it's going to activate that, that Neptune. So I think at the very least, it's going to be a relentless conversation of what's real, what's not, um, you know, if there's some kind of scandal that's going on in the background, what are the secrets? And also notice, remember Mars represents the family, as does the sun to some degree, because we're in Regulus here, um, still some good things for them. But Mars generally this year, which goes to next January, it goes into this T-square. Neptune's a problem. And we're already seeing some things. Lady Colin Campbell's coming out or came out, I guess, with her forward book talking about things. So it's really heavy right now with people writing and saying a lot of things about them. Then we have Scoop that just came out. Now, Scoop came out, I believe it was the first week of April. And that was, of course, the Netflix documentary on the news people who made that infamous interview with Prince Andrew Possible. So another thing that was just something they didn't really want to think about. Okay. So I'm going to get on to the next screen. Hang on one second. Um, okay. Sorry, I haven't done this in a few days. All right. So now what I'm going to look at is... I'm going to look at, uh, we'll just do a quick Princess Catherine update. And this is for, um, if, if you want to look at somebody's health, okay, you're going to look at the sixth house, okay, the sixth house Lord. And as of right now, um, all right. You're going to be looking at Saturn here. Okay. Is that for, okay, hold on one second. Okay. Now, notice that when, this is actually um, in a few years, Saturn is going to come in and oppose Saturn. So she is actually going to be okay. And as of August, okay, Saturn is moving up and suddenly her ruling planet of the sixth house, which is Saturn because it's Capricorn, um, it's in a really nice grand trine and that's going to be in August. So she should be okay. It's just that she's in a lot of, well, she's in recovery time and it's going to take a while. It doesn't mean that she's not going to be talking to some degree, it certainly does look like she's going to be doing some talking here because of Gemini. Uh, Jupiter and Gemini is a lot of talking. So she might be doing a lot of talking about her health. She might be doing it a little bit earlier in the summer 
But as far as feeling better, it's not going to be till probably about August. And so, yeah, once you get that Saturn opposing Saturn, and then also at the same time, she's going to have Uranus opposing, oh, that's right. This is, this is 2027. Um, Uranus opposing Uranus, very tough time. So it's going to be like, kind of like deja vu again for her. So I just wanted to give kind of an astrological health update that she's going to be okay. And she just has to, you know, do what the doctors tell her. And there is going to be some, you know, change. Uh, there could be some surprises that come in, but she's got a little time and, you know, she can feel, you know, forget about it. Seems very aggressive. I know. Yes. Uh, so that's what I have for Princess Catherine. Uh, let's look at Prince Charles' solar return. All right. So now this started last November. We are November, December, and then so on. Um, January, February. By the way, when you have, when you're looking at your own solar return chart and you've got a house that starts in Scorpio, that is one of the more challenging houses that I've found between me, my clients. It's always something like secret comes out, um, something is revealed. You might feel like you really want to, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's revenge. It's the revenge and betrayal sign. So it's very challenging once you come up on that month of Scorpio. And so this was, uh, so he started November 14th and it would have gone to December 14th, January, February, March, and now we're getting into April 14th. Here's that Saturn again. So what this tells me is that it's probably going to be next week when we hear something about his work, uh, because sixth house is work. And this is maybe some kind of... Uh, um, maybe an announcement um, or something that has to do with a worker themselves because sixth house is servants. And, um, and so that is kind of kicking off there. Um, what I want to do though, is I want to go back for a second to what's happening in these next few weeks. There seems to be either people going back to that photo and wanting more information, or there's something new coming in. And I want to know what that next, you know, it's a bad aspect with Neptune. What could that be? What could that uh, portend? And what's it going to have to do with? Now, could it could have already happened because of you know, Netflix bringing out that terrible story. It really didn't make Prince Andrew look very good. Uh, do I think he's the devil? No, I don't think he's the devil, but I think that he was tempted by the devil. And, uh, and we all are sometimes. Uh, would we make those same mistakes? Maybe, maybe not. So we try not to judge, but we do want to know what's ahead for these people. So between the UK chart and Prince Charles's chart in the next two weeks, I want to know, you know, what's, what's going to happen? What's the big fallout? So let me just put in my next, whoops, camera. Let's hope it works. Okay. It's so sluggish. It's so amazing. That's actually not a bad uh, theory there. So um, Sam Sam could be the big controversy by Harry being named in the P. Diddy. I don't know. I That's hard for me. I think they're just, I think they're reaching there. Um, all right. So, but we don't know. We don't know yet. So now what's this next scandal in the next few weeks that is going to plague, it seems, the English by the way, I hope you have your tea. Cheers, everyone. Um, interested to hear what kind of tea you drink. I prefer Yorkshire gold. Uh, all right, here we go. Okay. Oh, my God. Look at this. So this is going to be about the king. 
yeah, I from that chart, it looks like there's going to be an announcement coming up. That's my prediction. The prediction is there's going to be some kind of announcement about King Charles in April. This is going to have to do with his work. Could be a change, could be stepping back, but what will happen? Usually Uranus is a change, but Saturn means to stop. So what, what is he going to stop? That's what I have a question about. Let's see. Ace of Swords. Okay. So this could be Camilla. Um, Ace of Swords reversed. So uh, maybe opportunities are, you know, are minimized or something. Okay. Oh, thank you, Ghost Chaster. <laughs> Numi brand aged Earl Grey. I love Earl Grey. Um, thanks, Toy. <laughs> Yes. And all right. So Ace of Swords. Um, what do you think about that? So, okay. So there, maybe there is something that has to do with someone not being forthcoming. That could be, that could be the case. I don't know. Okay. So now I'm going to go over back to my cards or my, uh, my chart again. Whoops. And we're, we've got a couple of more charts to go here. Uh, all right. So first of all, this is between April 14th. Wouldn't it be interesting? Sometimes it's pretty wild. Like what happens will come on the exact day. Like, but this is, this looks like it could come out a couple of days after April 14th. Um, but anyway, there is an opposition here to the, po the point of fortune, which is that circle. Um, hmm, we got Black Moon Lilith there. And Black Moon Lilith is a shady character who's very successful, according to this chart. Why? Because it's conjunct part of fortune. It could be a, and we talked about this before, this could be somebody who could be a hidden enemy and is blocking something. So, and Saturn is the, the family. This is Prince Charles's family uh, in general, because why? The fifth house of his family is in Capricorn and the symbol for his family is Saturn. And it's opposing this. So there's a possibility that they are failing in something that really wasn't good to begin with because of part of fortune. And often we see an opposition with part of fortune is usually uh, somebody who maybe who is in the family uh, who is not doing something correctly. They're not on the up and up. And I know there's going to be plenty of uh, comments about who that might be, but this is the suns. The suns represent Saturn and also Prince Charles's work. So I think that there's probably a lot of negotiation right now about who is going to do what. What are the responsibilities going to be? That's in the sixth house. And lots and lots of changes, lots of changes. Now the sixth house, remember I told you, if you look at your own solar return chart and that house is in Aquarius, which this is, this shows if it's in your fourth house, it's going to show you're going to move. If it's in your fifth house, it might be something surprising about the family. Well, it's a little bit of both here. It's a change in work. So again, change in work, change in responsibilities. So another thing too, that's coming into this month for Prince Charles, this is a big month too. Whenever you see vertex in a house, in your own solar return chart, this is the point of your year. Okay. It's basically what this chart is for, what you're going towards. And interesting, it's Pisces, which is odd. I mean, that's photos. Um, 
It is maybe dealing with scandals, which is Pisces, but the vertex is in a square. And so that is going to also show another challenge, I think, that's coming up between April 14th and May 14th. So when you see these two planets, you're like, well, okay, well, what's that? Well, it looks like the brother because the third house is siblings. Okay. So there's something where the siblings are wanting to do something and they can't, uh, they might even disappear because when you have a square to Pisces, uh, yes. Yeah. There could be something that has to do with a, a hospital in, uh, between April 14th, April 14th and May 14th. So I know. Yeah. Oh, well I have, um, you know, cream and sugar. So it's, it's good stuff. Ace of swords reversed is not clear thinking and confusion. Yeah. Okay. So we could, we could be dealing with a hospital. We could be dealing with hospitals having, I mean, it could be as something, something as simple as look, these hospitals are opening and we have nobody to go there, you know, nobody to open the hospitals for the Royals or something. And suddenly none of the Royals are available. So that could be something as simple, simple as that. But here's another little trick. The third house, you're going to look at the third house. That's your brothers and sisters. But you want to look at the moon and Mercury too. And so what does the moon represent? Well, the moon represents your future for, for Prince Charles uh, because it rules his 11th house. It's not going to be the same for you, probably. Mercury, it is going to represent the career. And it's going to represent the identity. Oh, I feel, I feel sick. I really feel sick right now. Like this is huge, you guys. This is big. This is big. April 14th to May 14th. Oh my God. I mean, I feel like I want to cry right now. I don't know why. I don't even know why. Um, just because it's such a letdown, you know, it's such a, and, and I'm feeling the Saturnian energy, I guess, from this chart. Uh, it is, um, oh, hi, darling. I know everybody's watching the eclipse. I just try to keep my head down. Um, but yeah. And also it's kind of cloudy here. I'm, I'm about two hours drive away from, um, you know, the, the main area in Texas. So, but I keep my head down. I don't want to look at any eclipse. So, um, you're scared for bad health news. I know. I think that's what it is. It's a pain in the neck. I got to say that. But um, so so let's say, okay, no more Prince Charles and his duties starting mid-April. Now what? What's going to happen? And there's been, well, first of all, you know how the press and uh, the offices, the Kensington Palace office, all the offices, they're all going to be, they're going to know way ahead of time. They know now. And they are going to start placing things in the news. We're going to start seeing them. You watch. There's already been some kind of article, I think it came out today, that uh, it, Kate and uh, Wills are anxious about taking on the throne. So can you imagine having to be the figurehead for a country and not all is right with the family due to health reasons? So, okay. Thanks, Darlene. Florida. Um, yeah, I think you got, you probably got a good view. It's 141 central time and I know, well, that's the thing. You know, when you have an eclipse during Mercury retrograde, you're not going to have the great weather. That's why we don't go on vacation during Mercury retrograde, because it's probably not going to be good weather. All right. So I am, I'm shuffling the deck and, uh, you know, I want to know this month when we see things getting shut down, they are going to get shut down. They meaning duties, royal duties. What is the result of this fallout short term? 
And I say fallout, but it's a surprise. It's a shock. Hey, Shauna, nice to see you. All right, nine of pentacles. Looks like some people um, might be very happy about that. And there could be some money. Uh, so maybe maybe some kind of financial benefit. Um, so that looks pretty, you know, here I'm crying because of Saturn. And then, then we get a nine of pentacles. What the heck does that mean? Um, okay. <laughs> what are you talking about, mom to three kitties? I need to know. Um, oh, you're talking about the tea. Okay. So, um, all right. Can you give us some clarification? I mean, it looks like good news. It looks like bad news for some, good news for others. But what's going on with all this financial um, benefit? Six of cups. So maybe we will be hearing things like we're stepping back to spend time with the family. That would be a family card. Uh, lots going on. Maybe the whole family is together. And uh, I know there's a lot of people who are talking about that because of the Lady Colin Campbell book and her forward is out. I don't know if her book is out yet, but she rails on them. And it, you know, it's unfortunate. It's very unfortunate. Yeah, I know. It's a good card. So why are we seeing something stop? And it's almost like the floodgates are coming out for somebody. Is it some kind of six of cups is going back to the past? Could it be some, some kind of financial benefit for the citizens? I wonder if there could be some kind of, you know, there's always a distraction. There's always a diversion. So perhaps, and these things are always announced on Friday, Maybe on Thursday, we're going to get some kind of indication that, um, you know, there's going to be a tax benefit or something that the people can take advantage of. I hope that's the case because why not, especially in this day, day and age. So let me go back to the chart and you're going to be interested in this next one. Uh, let's see, this is, yeah, so I, I kind of made it, I'm going to go to Prince Andrew after this, but, uh, this is a little bit more detailed, but by the time August comes around, look at that opposition there with Mars and the sun and Mars is, um, that siblings. So I wonder if, He's got so much other stuff going on, but he just, he, he wants to remove the energy that surrounds, this is a nice way of putting it, Prince Andrew. I think that's a possibility. Now, good things. We want to see good things. Um, we've got something, uh, May 14th. This is Neptune. We talked about this already. It's It looks like good photographs. They're really stepping up here. Uh, late spring, it, it's, I almost think that there's going to be a distraction from all of this, that everybody's going to be worried about something else. And that could be um, May to June here. Now with the eighth house, this is a tough house to, everybody has it every year. And this is going to be June 14th to July 14th. Uh, usually when you have North Node in a house, it's like, oh, I can't wait till that house because the North Node is what you're going to get. And so there might be some kind of, um, still he's getting inheritances from his mother. So that would be an inheritance there. But it is squaring Pluto which is the monarchy. So he's supposed to be getting something. And the monarchy is like, mm, no, you know, I mean, he really is, isn't he the last uh, decision maker? But it seems as if there's something that is holding up this maybe inheritance gift. 
something uh, maybe that has to do with a will and it's just stuck. That's what the square sometimes mean is it's stuck. So uh, yeah, that's a possibility. We'll look at his chart in a second. Um, so yeah, I put pointing at house eight and three. Um, yeah, these are yet again, this is another very um, faded month, which would be, that's June 14th and July 14th. So what are we looking at here? Well, we are looking at, um, this is Yad 1. Why did I do that in blue? And this is Yad 2. And it's kind of like, whenever I see a yacht, it's like, it's it's the finger of fate, but it's also like a look at me, look at me. And North Node also shows faded happenings. So June 4th and July 14th, another very, very faded month. Uh, it's This one for him is in Aries. So there's going to be some things that are, that are, are stuck, yet again stuck. Uh, but I, again, I think it has to do with the siblings. You'd think it would have to do with his kids, which April 14th to May 14th does, but there's a lot more with the siblings than what we're being told. In my opinion, <laughs> Darlene, you really don't like Harry. Um, yeah, th that's a possibility as far as the inheritances, uh, that he's stopping the her inheritances. So maybe he himself uh, this is an inheritance, the eighth house and, uh, the fifth house. Yep. The fifth house is the kids. So that could definitely be blocking, 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 blocking. Now, what, we, what would we do though? We look at Pluto and we'd be like, uh, okay, so who's Pluto? What's that represent? So you have to go back into the chart and look at the third house, which is where Pluto is the Lord of. So you would think, I think it might have to do with family and siblings. It is juggling. He's trying to juggle between his kids and the siblings. So siblings really, really have a lot of, uh, influence here because there's four planets in his third house. And then on top of it, oh my God, that opposition with Uranus. And that is going to be July 14th to August 14th. That is a huge shock. So there's a possibility, and this is in the ninth house, more publications, a shock from the press. The press is about to, I mean, they locked and loaded. Well, they are reloading here. They're getting ready to yet again shock them. But it's going to, you know, it's almost as if Prince Andrew, I mean, I'll get in trouble for saying this, but it's like at this point he's an easy target. So everybody's focused on that and they're going to just want to maybe, I don't know if it's Prince Andrew, but there's something, there's something there where somebody wants to get revenge or I don't know. So, um, okay. Yeah. All pointing at, at house three. Yeah. So three is the siblings. Now three, I mean, if you're looking at a king here, three or house three is also the subjects and the locals. So you know, what we're saying here from another country might be a lot different than what's being thought of with the local people. And the third house is also cars. So yikes. I don't like this at all. Are you seeing this? Third house is a car. Mars is metal. Mars is also, um, you know, an attack. And I think we talked about this before a little while ago, but I mean, they have to be very careful. This is, this looks like it could be an attack and that would be between 
that would be between July 14th and August 14th. So we're going to have to keep our eye out on that. Hopefully nobody's driving around anywhere in a weird car. It looks like somebody else's Scorpio, somebody else's car, government car. I don't know. Um, I mean, I'm reading this like you guys are. Okay. So he is Prince Andrew. Oh, what an unfortunate, unfortunate solar chart. But the reason I say that is that this year sucks. This year sucks for him. And he is a Virgo rising this year for the solar return chart, which means Mercury is in the third house for him. Um, it's about the same. It's about the same as... Uh, Maybe I got that wrong. Maybe this is Charles's chart. Hold on. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to flip over to the 2025 chart and then I'm just going to double check his 2024. But look at this chart. This chart looks a lot better um than other charts that he's had. You can see uh there's a kite here. Um the third house, this is his siblings. There's a trine to Mercury. And it seems as if there are a lot of pros for him starting next February. So he kind of has to, he kind of has to just lay low this year. And I'm only saying that as if, you know, Prince Andrew's talking to me and he's like, Val, what's my year look like? And, you know, I mean, you don't place judgment on these people. So February 19th, 1960, let me see this for a second. I just want to double check. Uh, okay, February 19th. This is Prince Andrew's chart, 1960, uh, London. And it was 1530. So we're going to pull his solar return chart. And we're going to look at the solar return chart for 2024 because he's had his birthday already. And then what we're going to do is we're going to click the solar only. Okay. Oops. Why isn't that? Looks like there's a delay or something. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, so it's a little different than Prince Charles. I had the wrong chart. And here it is. Okay, so for this year, like look at that last degree of Sag. Uh, that means when you have your rising sign for your solar return chart and it looks like this, it's in the last degree, it means you're ending a period. You're done, okay? You're tired of being in the, the tabloids, uh, which would be Sagittarius. You're tired of the courts. Um, you know, just you're ready to move on and get to the next chapter of your life. So this is the very, it would seem, the last year where he really has to deal with, you know, a lot of this um, acrimony and whatever, whatever else you want to call it. But so what we would do is we would look at Jupiter, which is here, and that is his um, chart ruler. Jupiter generally is good. Jupiter and Taurus, mm, that's a lot of money. And then it's sextiling Saturn. That's old money. So that looks excellent for him. There's only one problem here. We've got tons of women and they are all fighting. Look at that. Venus, women, Pluto, lots and lots of women. Mars, angry woman, and they are pissed. They're pissed at him and he's pissed at them. So it goes back and forth. So then what we would do is it is February 19th. So we would start February 19th, then March 19th. And this goes March 19th to April 19th. So he's got a few days to go in the second house. And look at that Uranus right there. It's squaring 
this is a big shock he had. Um, maybe he was not expecting something that could be that Netflix show. Um, but you know what? It, it looks like something else came in that was, that made him feel good and he got some help from it. And you know what the moon in the seventh is? That's Fergie. That is Princess Ferguson. So she's there for support. Uh, and also Mercury, Mercury is support. So somehow she's helping him. But yeah, big Uranus energy. So now we're going to get into April 19th starts here. And that's when his Aries house starts. So go over to the Mars. Boom. That's what's going to happen. He's going to go right back into the square again. And there's go he's going to have to deal with anger issues from others, his own anger issues. It And it looks like there's more money that needs to be paid out somehow. Why? Because Jupiter's in Taurus. So that is money. It seems as if money, um, I mean, it could be a farm, but uh, it is squaring all of this energy. It just, it looks... I don't know. It doesn't look very good, but let's not overlook Neptune here. We're still here. This is another scandal. This is a famous scandal. So he's having to go back and think again about that last scandal. So the third house, which will start, so we got February 19th, March 19th, April 19th to May 19th. He is dealing with third house things, which is his brother. And it, you know what, if he could, if he could just take this next month and throw it away, he would want to, because it's just, it's extreme. And why do you say it's extreme? Because of that Pluto, that is so much with Venus, a lot of money. That is a lot of money. And Jupiter is a court. So I don't know. I don't know. There could be, it, it looks like a lot of anger from some women. It looks like a war. It's like females are at war with him. Okay, so I want to do a card. Uh, yeah, maybe he's getting an inheritance. Will he get a famous partner with the moon on the descendant? Well, he already has one, really. I mean, she's living with him. I think that's Fergie. And uh, yeah, unless they have him back in the fold. Um. King Charles is going to abdicate the throne. Yes, I know. I call him PC too. And I get in trouble for doing that. Oh, hey, Teresa. <laughs> Teresa, Lena, and Princess the dog. Wow, we've got a group here. And uh, could be going back Princess Diana in the past car. <gasps> oh, my God. Told you, you said the same thing. Oh, you were talking about the other one. You were talking about the other chart. But look, this is, no, this isn't a car accident because we have Uranus squaring Mercury. I don't know. That could still, here's the thing. And what time is that? That's going to be February, March, April, May 19th to June 19th. Now, when you have Mercury, that's your mindset. And it's squaring Uranus. That is just, that's at the very least could be anxiety. It's what your mind is on. It is a huge, huge upset to your mind. And it's not only in second in the second house, Mercury, but Uranus is in the fourth house in Taurus, which is money again. So you're talking about somebody who is really upset, it seems, about money. It's interesting how I, I always get, at least in the past few months, I've been getting so much financial stuff. So it makes me wonder if... You know, there's going to be some kind of sale of a castle or something. I don't know. Um, all right. Now, let me see if I can go to the next one. So if you look at this one, you can see that he's doing a lot better next year. Um, as far as money, oof, still look at that second house. That's what you want to do when you look at your financial situation for the year. You look at the second house in the second house Lord and the second house Lord looks freaking fantastic on one hand, but yet still secret upsets in the background. This is Uranus squaring Mercury. Mercury is your mind. So still 
still going to be some upsets and it doesn't mean all year. It just means the months that these represent. And in a sense, it's good because in the 12th house, nobody can see it. It's secret. So, um, you know, sometimes that gives you a little bit, a little bit better, uh, mindset. Now, wow, look at this. When you want to, not that I want to jump ahead to 2025 because we're still like, we got a lot going on in 2024, but when you want to look at what you're going to gain, um, North node is in the 11th house of hopes and dreams and oh God, I hope he doesn't gain a scandal. Uh, looks like he's going to get one more scandal. Just one more. Uh, I think let's look at what, let's look at what the reporters are doing. Uh, the ninth house would be the reporters. So we got Saturn right here. They're right there in his 11th house. He's Mercury. They're, they're right next to him. They want to talk to him about something. Uh, it, it looks like because Mars is in cancer, Mars is in cancer when you have abusive language, um, something where you're really beating somebody up and Saturn representing these older reporters because of Saturn, it's in the third house here. And so, you know, in the spring of next year, there's probably going to be something that happens where they're trying, they are trying to do something because of Mars. Mars is like a weapon, but it's in retrograde. So it, it's going to be like, okay, whatever. And then he's going to move on. So I like to see retrograde planets sometimes in these solar return charts because it's like, all right, fine, you know, go for it. And it's easy to move on because they don't have as much as they're saying that they have. I mean, we can apply these charts to our own experiences, I think. Uh, let's see. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Okay, so let me see what else here. I think what I want to do is just take a look at the Saturn again. Saturn's, Saturn is in Pisces. So this is an old photo, might go, be going back to the photo again. But yet with Saturn here squaring his brother, this is more stuff they've got to deal with. And, you know, some photo that might come out again. Um, and the only reason I say photos is because we got to get through Pisces here. Pisces is photos and videos and cameras and all that stuff. So um, we have got, we've got a very heavy next six months for this family. Uh, still going to be some good things that come from it. Their family might get, the dynamics might change. They really might. Will and we've, we've looked at this before, but I would like to look at Prince Harry and see what's happening with him. He's going to be, he's going to be in the UK soon. He's going to be in England from what I understand. And, uh, let's see, let's look at him. So he's going to be Saturn. Yeah, he is really playing a big role between April 14th and May 14th. Harry is going to play a big role. He's going to want to do something, but he is not going to be successful. That's that uh, opposition. However, Saturn also represents Prince William. And if you wanted to get technical, you could say that the fifth house represents Prince William. And this, uh, the seventh house and the seventh house Lord represents Harry. Interesting that the Lord of the seventh house, if we wanted to assign Neptune to Harry, is trining the third house, which shows that maybe Charles' siblings are in contact with him, uh, you know, nieces, that kind of stuff. So he's at least, he's at least getting some benefit. 
But this is definitely the suns collectively. And there's going to be news about that between April 14th and May 14th. Okay. Hey, E. De Silva. All right. So let's talk about uh, what's going to happen with Harry and, you know, how he's going to deal with the next six months. Uh, what, what are we going to see with him? And let me put this on. Just some hints about Harry and Megan, both Harry and Megan. Astronaut Kim, Astronaut Kim, you gave me such a um, a great gift. You're always giving me information. So uh, thank you so much for the birth time for one of the victims we're talking about. So um, I'm going to base that on one of my shows coming up. So thank you for that. All right. So let's concentrate here. Let's have some tea. Okay. Harry and Megan, uh, you know what I want to know? I want to know what Saturn represents. Saturn is opposing part of fortune. What does that mean? Yes, Darlene, I think, um, <laughs> Darlene, you never hold back. <laughs> yeah, she might be the, the in-between. But what what is Saturn in Prince Charles' sixth house? Let's ask that. That way I don't feel like I'm gossiping about Harry and Meghan. Um, what is, I'm gossiping about the, the planet. How about that? Saturn in the sixth house. What is that? And what is going to present itself between April 14th and May 14th? Okay, here we go. Seven of Cups. All right, so um, a lot of decisions. A lot of decisions, yet it's Saturn. So Saturn doesn't necessarily always represent a lot of decisions. Uh, so he's going, let's say that there's going to have to be some kind of a stop. Oh, this could be, who am I going to stop working with? That's a possibility. Uh, and then can you clarify a little bit more what that Saturn and six house is uh, representing the, the sons and the family opposing part of fortune conjunct black moon Lilith, which is kind of like shady stuff. You know what that would represent when the brothers want to be shady, but they can't, they can't do it. And Charles won't let them. I think that's a possibility. <laughs> Darling, you don't sugarcoat. All right. So can we get a clarification card on that Saturn representing the suns and what they're trying to do to each other? Uh, it, it doesn't look very nice. I guess it doesn't matter because it's full on what they're trying to do, but what would that be? Okay. Um, would be reverse temperance. Um, all right. First temperance. Let's see. We've got well, that's what it looks like. Reversed. Temperance reversed. So that's going to give us some kind of clue. Let me see. Let me look it up. Um out of balance. So they're causing stress and anxiety. Okay. Yep. So the brothers are out of balance and the element is fire. Uh, the next card is the devil. The previous card is death. The ruling planet is Jupiter and it means disharmony, imbalance, lack of patience, onset of illness. So, uh, yeah, so they're having to deal with that and that is Charles and Harry together is Saturn. They're kind of putting a stop to things, but it's kind of a double-edged sword in a sense, because if you look here, part of fortune is yay. Um, Black Moon Lilith is, you know, yikes. So Part of fortune, unfortunately, is in, a, in opposition with Saturn. There's, there's no success this year with, 
with Charles, it seems. At least he doesn't think he's a success. That's usually what I say when I'm doing readings. Like, let's see, you know, if you're going to get any success or if you're going to feel like you're successful at the end of the year. That's what part of fortune is going to help you with. But at the same time, it's an opposition with somebody in the 12th house. Uh, it could be a combined energy that the suns are feeling shady towards each other and they want to do something, but they can't. But it could also be somebody that both of them don't like, that they might be battling. That's how I think his sons could repair their relationship to some extent if there was a shared enemy that they were going up against. And that's a possibility, I think. Uh, what's weird is I always like to look at Gemini in these charts. Why? Because it kind of indicates your twin. It could be your twin or the twin of something. Um, it looks exactly alike, or it could be like deja vu. Like, didn't I already do this back in 1998? Um, it like, looks exactly like something. So Gemini on his MC could be the twin of somebody else. And I wonder Now he is King Charles the third. I wonder if it will be his, let's just say his career this year, going until the next November 14th. I wonder if it's going to resemble another reign of some sort. Uh, or if he is going, now this is really far-fetched, so indulge me, but he could be, somebody could be his twin and not like an impersonator. <laughs> Although we might see some King Charles per impersonators, but I think we could potentially see someone who might look like him in his career. I don't know. We're, we're going to have to see. It's probably not going to happen until the summer until we're like, oh, that's the twin. So I always find it uh, slightly amusing with Gemini there. The other thing I do when I look at solar return charts is I will look at the cusp. Um, a lot of people like whole signs and that works really well for them. I mean, you can't really do that with a solar return chart. But when I do look at charts, I, I tend to not use the whole sign because I really like to see the fixed stars that are close to those cusps. That is going to give you a really good indicator of, you know, what's happening as an example for Prince Charles, you have the 12th house, which would be the hidden enemy, and it's in Regulus. So the hidden enemies are royals. And it's super interesting there. The sun here is in the in the third house. The sun would represent the 12th house of hidden enemies. And so there's just Yuck. I mean, if this is siblings, they want revenge, they feel betrayed. Oh, Charles, how could you? You know, that kind of stuff is Scorpio. Um, it is just, and they're all in shock too. So this has been a year that threw everybody for a loop. And uh, I don't think one person that's in this intimate royal court uh, is not completely shocked about what's happening. And yet again, we still have many more months to go. So just to reiterate, April 14th to May 14th, more news, uh, more things about the, the sons, more things about photos. Um, maybe an old scandal comes up more about the sixth house, which is Charles's duties. The duties stop. According to this, hey, maybe it won't happen. And we got to look back at this chart and say, why is this chart wrong? But this chart is telling me duties stop. And that's between April 14th and May 14th. So we'll have to take a look at that. So I hope that you can join me and Amber, who is an amazing tarot card reader. She is probably going to come on on Friday. So I'm going to ask her, see if she can come on Friday. We're always expecting news on Fridays. It's just 
the day that the Royals love to release information. And, uh, yeah. So, and if you're a Cancer Cusp, um, Darlene, that's very psychic. You have a lot of intuition and, uh, and also represents, you know, you guys are talking about dogs in the chart. It represents dogs too. Dogs like to help. And, uh, and also represents food. There are a lot of chefs that are representing or that represent cancer because those are the types of people who can just, I mean, not all of them, but, um, you know, if your moon is in a bad aspect, it's not necessarily going to be the case, but you know, those people who can just whip something up and start cooking, well, that would be cancer. So why am I, why am I mentioning that? Because you guys are talking about cancer, uh, cancer rising. Let's see where his cancer is. Cancer is the 11th house. This is friends and the moon is down here. Ooh, I'm not sure I like that. Uh, hmm. It's a group of friends and it's in Sagittarius. Well, this could simply mean that his friends are helping. I mean, just very simple. Why cancer is to help and 11th house is friends. Um, but there are friends that are talking to the tabloids, I think. Moon and Mercury means to talk, to gossip, and it's in Sagittarius, which is publications. So uh, it seems as if they're going to try at least. But look at how there's a square to part of fortune, a great indicator that they're not going to be able to get exactly what they want. So there could be some forms of betrayals. I mean, after all, it is in the third house this year of Scorpio. So, uh, you know, it's like he just, he should just go to Spain for a little bit, just like Camilla and take it easy and not, not really pay attention to all of this stuff. Most of it is coming from family most of his stress, believe it or not, because there, there's so much with the public. The public just makes up things. They believe certain things. They believe people are dead. Um, they believe things are fake. So there's a whole bunch of stress on that count. Yet at the same time, I think that's more of the palace's problem. They deal with a lot of that. This is all about the inner circle, I think. So something, um, he's going to have to deal with for the rest of the year. Oh, wow, Darlene. That's amazing. So, all right. Well, uh, I will be back and we'll be doing some more live streams, uh, tomorrow and the next day we're going to be doing, uh, gosh, P Diddy, um, how to be, how to recognize super wealth. And also tomorrow night, I'm going to be broadcasting about um, Chris Proudfoot and see what his prediction is, just like we did with Prince Charles. So we'll see what happens and what develops with that and with the royal family. Thank you all so much for joining me and I'll see you tomorrow.